Hello, everyone. I'm glad you're back. This is part two of our episode on schedules and routines. It was a lot of fun the last time, and we decided it's going to take a whole other episode to talk about routines. We talked about schedules. We'll probably cover a few things, review, but we're going to mostly focus today on routines, predictability in the classroom. Let's get started with our teacher on board. This is going to be a fun episode. Welcome to In the Nest Show. I'm Suzanne. Sitting beside me on this episode, again, second part two, is Miss Lene. Hi, how are you? I'm, I'm so good. glad you're okay. here. Yes, Welcome. I'm happy to be back. We're going to have lots of discussions. Yes, we are. I think we're going to get to see you in the classroom, mm -hmm. just demonstrating for all the educators out there that want to learn and want to say, I, I want to do that. I, yes. And we know you guys can do it because yep. we learned to do it. So she's going to show you actually inside the classroom. She's going to stand in front of the board. It's going to be really fun. You yeah. guys are going to really like it. Yes. But Ms. Lene, tell us just a little bit about yourself. I know you introduced yourself on the last episode, sure. but how many years have you been doing early childhood? And have you have any kids? And yes. tell us all that. So I've got two kids, 13 and nine. And my youngest was here at the nest. And like I said before, I really wish she could come back. She's pretty amazing. <laughs> I've been here four years now. I started in the twos classroom and here I am teaching pre-K. What do you think is different from when she was here? Just give me a couple of quick examples of what that we do now because yeah you you're, I've been here seven years you've yes. been here four years yes what do you see that we do obviously it's better we wouldn't be doing it if right. it wasn't better so what do you see oh my gosh schedule for number one is amazing all the resources that we have now that we can teach the children with um, workbooks nest phonics cards just everything everything is a million times better I'm super grateful that she had the opportunity to come to the nest when it first started but I would do it all over again, definitely. Uh, you, you'd definitely. Be, you would be back. Yes, absolutely. Be, there's one way to be back at the nest, you absolutely miss not. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> is, that a, is that a hard no? <laughs> that's a hard, that's a, definitely a oh, hard come pass on, for me. Just one more, just one more. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> That would be fun. No, thank you. <laughs> so you actually, you you said the word nest phonics. And yes. I, we've got some other podcasts. And those of you out there who watch us regularly, you've watched our podcast specifically in talking about our nest phonics product. So, Miss Lene, just I'm going to just squeeze in here a little uh, plug about you teach nest phonics in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how effective that is in teaching kids sounds and then making sounds into words. Just go ahead and, it's, and tell us it's a little bit. amazing. The Nest Phonics cards are so simple to use. Even a homeschool mom could use them. You don't have to be trained. Everything that you need to know is on the backside of that phonics card. The letter sound, the story of the character that goes with it, the song. It's can you, amazing. Can you say one? Does one come to mind? Is there um, a favorite character? So at our... Um, Phonics dress up day, I dressed up as Jude the jogger. Jude the jogger. Yes. So I was decked out in all my jogging clothes and I had a medal and my race number. And yeah, I was Jude the jogger. So I have to tell you what she's talking about. For the <laughs> first time ever, we had Nest Phonics Alphabet Day. So instead of all the silliness that we could dress up in, it doesn't really necessarily mean anything mm -hmm. to us. We decided this was our first year to do it. Every child and every teacher. Yes. I was, oh, let me think. Oh, I was the yodeler. Yes. I was a yodeler. Yanni the yodeler. Yanni the yodeler. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everybody came dressed as a an, a sound letter of the alphabet. And so when they got out of the car, it was pretty funny. How many astronauts did we have? We had a ton of astronauts. <laughs> we had a lot of Bear at the Bakers, Vanessa the Vets. Van it was fun. <laughs> Vanessa the Vet with her vulture. Yes. Vanessa with her vulture. Yes. It was such a fun day. So in a future episode, you guys, I will share. We have all the letters of the alphabet now with a teacher and or student dressed like that letter. And we're going to create a poster out of it is so fun. But mm -hmm. of course, a good place to really go look at that, too, is nestknowledge.com. That's where all those phonics products are. And it's just amazing. It's yes. colorful. It's fun. Uh, this year, for the first time, I had those phonics cards available for touring parents. And I had several of our parents that the child has not gone to the nest and they want to get it done over the summer. Yeah. They want to at least familiarize yes. themselves mm -hmm. because our three-year-old classes have been doing the phonics. It's very, just a very strong teaching program. Yes. And so last week they started putting like A-N-T on the board. Yeah. There's our uh, Nest Knowledge website and 
you can see it's colorful, it's playful, it's musical. It's just a joyful place to go yes. and see and learn all about us. Yeah, there's those cards. Th there's those cards. Yep. And it's just fun to watch inside in the classroom. And the other cool thing, and this is something that's also brand new, and I don't even know if it's totally up and functioning, but it will be. All those phonics cards have a QR code. Yes. And you'll be able to go to the QR code. Maybe even you as a teacher, Miss mm -hmm. Lene, will be recording some of that stuff for us. Oh, great. Yeah, I'd love you'll, to. <laughs> watch, tune in here. You'll get to see Miss Lene doing, yes. demonstrating one of our episodes. Yeah. So Yeah, so there's all the information there, on the back of the card the that I was card. talking about. Yes. Yeah, so as I'm sitting there Can teaching you sing this that letter. Song for E? Oh gosh, I am I the engineer? I don't even remember what I got. Oh, I don't. How about? Uh, uh, yeah, I know. I'm like yeah. there. But even the mouth, the shape of your mouth, and how you pronounce the sound is on the card. Very right. Yep, right there. So that it's, you're sure you're helping the child, yes, right? When you're yes. looking at that, mm -hmm. you are helping them, and you can read it. Like your tongue should be down. You're yes. just mm -hmm. really fascinating. It's fascinating. It's perfect. It's fascinating. Yeah, so, yeah we're happy to have Miss Lene on board. She's Thank an you. awesome teacher. And let's just get down to it, and let's start talking about our classroom clips and let's start talking about our subject matter of today yeah routines, routines. okay a good place to start when you're talking about a topic is to define it so yes. what is a routine a routine it establishes a sense of predictability in the classroom that supports the students learning by knowing what to expect they're better able to engage in the curriculum without being thrown off by unexpected activities or scheduling shifts I think we sets up clear routines. It's always the same. This is always what we do. This is always how we do it. We've designed these routines and we've practiced them here at the Nest. And that's where Miss Lene, so good to have a classroom teacher here because you, I say the theory and I know how we sat at tables and mm -hmm. wrote it, but you say, oh yeah, that theory works. Yes. Huh? You, you, yes. you confirm and that. We're about we to show it. some clips, but I, right. I want to talk about that predictability. So designing your routines, coming up with routines. There's a lot of stuff out there that teachers show fun little songs. In chapel, for example, I, when the kids come in and there are, there's between 50 and 100 kids that come in and they're sitting on the little squares. And so I always, they want something funny. They want Miss Suzanne to be funny. So we shake our hands. Sometimes we pretend they're wings and we fly into our nest. But we always open, shut them, open, shut them, give a little clap, open, shut them, open, shut them, fold them in your lap. And they know that I'm going to do that. And they know that then they bow their heads and we pray. And when I say in Jesus name, they say, amen. And they know we're going to start learning. The first thing we're going to learn in chapel is we start out with our Bible verse routines. So I was going to, the activity, where, so where does the activity take place? That's part of the routine. How long in the schedule is it for? What is each, where does each section take place? Take place. So this happens in this auditorium. This happens outside. Mm -hmm. This happens, we go outside a lot for picnics. Mm -hmm. That's not on our schedule, but it's a, a routine. When we go outside for a picnic, this is how we take care of our lunches. And yes. this is where we throw our trash, right? right? Even mm -hmm. that has yes. a routine to Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So it's age appropriate. That's a big deal. Our two-year-olds are doing something different than your pre-K classes. Yes. Yeah, that's it's not the same. No, absolutely not the same. No. Even our... next year you're excited because you we have a whole group of 3-year-olds that have been we call it nestified. They are. They <laughs> really are. So they're getting nestified kids <laughs> yes. next year. The yes. whole class is going to yes. be nestified. Yes. So your job's going to be a lot It's going to be super easy. It's a lot but easier. They always need a little bit of reinforcement sometimes. Yes. Right? Yes. And I think when routines and schedules, I think it should go from active just a little bit more passive, intense. So let, let's loosen up a little mm -hmm. bit. Let's get yep. the wiggles out. What's the topic? What are we doing? What are we, how do we address? How do we go first to this topic? Without further ado, this is exciting. I love videos that demonstrate what we're talking about. Sure. Miss Lene, let's start off with this demo and you talk me through it. Here's one of our phonics yes, cards. Yes, here's our so phonics card. So talk about card. this. What's this teacher doing? So she is going, and this is, I believe this is a threes classroom. This is our teacher, Miss Kara. So she is going over our Nest Phonics card, and she's even got props for these kids to make it more engaging. So is, um, it, is, is, is it she always have the card at the same place? Is it sitting up there? It looks like it's yes. sitting on a little shelf. Right. So sitting on a little the shelf, same. The always know. in the same place okay. they know. Yep. They okay. sit down on the carpet, and they look up at the board where the Phonics card is. Yes. And then, obviously, she's got the little props there that she hands out. It makes it a little bit. Oh, it I makes see. She handed out. That was Dean the dancer. Dean she handed the out dancer. Disco yes. glasses. Disco glasses. Oh, that's She's fun. got a disco ball. It makes it, it, it brings a little, another element to the learning. 
So even here, I see that they're, she's obviously getting something engaging and yes. they're being maybe oh, silly or yep, something. They're dancing. She's they're probably dancing. singing okay. the song that goes with um, the card. The letter sound. So they know that this is the time we're going to do our phonics. Yes. And mm -hmm. so they know when we do find, oh, look, there's, what's he doing? Yeah. Oh, he's got the disco ball. <laughs> They're all dancing. And so do all the phonics cards have props pretty much? Yes. Yes, oh, they I do. I love that. Mm -hmm. So in addition to the card, in addition to the little song that you're singing. Yes. Emma, the engineer. Yes. In addition to that. You got a prop. There's a prop. There's mm -hmm. a prop. And the kids are having fun with it. They're wearing yes. their disco glasses. That's just so fun. And it always same place? It's always the same place. Same time? Same time. Same station? Same station. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Always. So let's go to our next one. This is actually, I, I love when we show twos classes. Yes. So talk me through, what do you think is oh, happening yeah. here? Oh, look at these twos. They are transitioning to their morning stations. They know how they're to two. do it. That's and they're twos, twos class. Yes. Wow. Yes. They know how to do it. Looks like they're uh, putting leaves on some paper, probably that goes along with the letter sound that they're doing or the theme or the unit that we're working in that okay. day. So um, if you're the teacher of this class, what have you mm -hmm. done before those children get up from their the mat, the rug? Model. Yeah. Always. Yep. This is what we're going to do first. This is what's going to happen at this oh, station. What, what are the kids there doing on the floor? Well, they've got some free play centers okay. right there. Yeah. Okay. So always a free play center or a self-directed center. Okay. Yeah. But those oh, are toys. Toys. Uh, we think of them. We always know there's something behind it. Correct. We have an objective kind of to everything yes. we do here. We don't do things just yes, randomly. But they are toys. They're, They're toys. And they can just play. They're so, two. So still. you can have a schedule for your toys? Yes, we can. <laughs> we have a toy schedule. Yeah. Ooh, toy story, toy schedule. Oh, that's yes. pretty cool. All right. So you, if I dumped you into a twos class, mm -hmm. you actually, it's the same thing. Same thing. I love that. They have their routine you and they know it. Well, yes. you started in twos. I did start like in twos. I started in twos also. Yes. I think and it's we important. had our routines and they know their routines. Wow. And they will let you know if you're not following it. <laughs> they like will I let you, you know. If that agenda on the board is yes. incorrect, they're going to let you know. Absolutely. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. I love that they're two-year-olds. I know. Look at them. They're <sighs> fantastic. It's amazing. All right. Let's go to our next video. So this one. This is showing uh, a small group and mm -hmm. it's showing, now this is again, she's directing them, but this isn't magic, right? No, this absolutely is not. a routine. So what do you think her routine is here? They're going from what to what and what's the routine? So she's obviously modeled how to transition from each station, how to clean up. Are they putting up. their things? Okay, they're yes. putting their things yep, away They're putting in their things way. away. They are, they're pushing in their chairs, they're cleaning okay. up. So in that, um, that she's modeling there, there is the routine of cleaning up. She, They know when it's time to rotate or time to go to the carpet. Look at them. This is a three-year-old class. It's a three-year-old class. So yes. they're not running over to the window nope. or running nope. to the door. Nope. Or... They know to go to the carpet. They're looking for a spot. It looks like they're like, he just yeah, he dove the in there. Yes, right he there. sure did. He's like, <laughs> he so, sure did. So you but can yeah, still be looking... wiggly, three-year-olds, actually. Absolutely. But you're still following. You're still following the routine. Yes. And then so now that there's a different type of session she's going mm -hmm. to be doing something different yep so while she'll the students, be doing oh they're getting their lunch miss lene oh they're getting their lunch look at that so that's a great transition to go from learning to the carpet to then a select few you may now go get your water and your lunch and come have a seat that way it's not mass chaos out in the hallway with everybody getting their lunches and their waters i was gonna say so let's pretend that we she did not she had not taught them this routine and mm -hmm. let's pretend that they were sitting at the table and she said, let's go get our lunches. Sure. What would happen? Oh, we'd have 15 <laughs> three-year-olds running into the door to get their lunches and their waters. And watch yes. this. Look, even how she sets her lunch down. Mm -hmm. Watch this little girl. Yep. She's opening it up. It's, yeah. There's This kid's not helping that. They're all doing their own They're thing. They're all doing their own thing. And they know that, okay, it's lunchtime. We're going to get everything out. Maybe. First. Maybe. Okay. Now, yeah. Unpack everything. Maybe they'll leave it in their lunchbox. But then we're going to pray. That's the routine. Oh, I think we're you're going, going to get to, to pray see before we I think eat. they do the, uh, I think this is the Superman prayer. Oh, I yeah, love this. Let's, okay. let's see if that's, if this, oh, look at these bowing yep, the she's head. ready. They're ready to pray. Mm -hmm. they say that when, so when all the kids get in the classroom, yep. they all know that I'm not putting any food in my mouth even. I'm going to nope. thank the Lord for yes. the blessing of this meal. Correct. Before I start eating. If you yes. can, if you can, if you're and, not too hungry, if the Cheetos aren't too attractive. Nope. And they know that's the routine. They so know that before this, they eat, they have to pray. She's getting ready. She's got she's her prayer hands. Let's see. See if you could tell which prayer she's singing. I think she's singing a prayer here. I think she's doing a, is it, thank you, Lord, for giving us food. Is that the one? Do you guys she, do that one? No, we do some, we, you we do have, different? yes, our prayer is a little bit different. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just, it's just so awesome. And again, a routine. If by our routine, we clean up, we mm -hmm. put our things away, we mm -hmm. push our chairs in, we sit on the carpet, we get up from the carpet as the teacher calls us, 
We go out to the area, pick up our lunchbox. Yes. We come back into the classroom. We go to an assigned seat. I know it doesn't show it in this video, but I know that they have name tags. Yes, uh, on their so tables. there's times when you mm -hmm. say, please go sit by your name. Right. And another thing, this is just a funny side note, but in this classroom, because these children have learned their phonics, they go around sounding out each other's names now. Yes, Isn't I love that. that. That's amazing. amazing. Yes, this yes. phonics thing really works. Mm -hmm. The science of reading is really accurate. Yeah, it, it really, really is. It really is true. So yes, this is just this is wonderful. Look and at those kids; they're having so much fun. Yeah, and the schedule and the routine goes hand in hand. They know. Okay, after we do these morning stations, guess what? Guess what? It's lunchtime. Yes, and so, they're, they're ready for and lunch. They're, yes. they're ready to eat. We're, all, we're always ready to eat. Yeah. yeah, so I'm going to say, so let's go to the next one. Oh, this is fun. This happens multiple times. Yes. You've talked about the different classes that you see, yeah. how they do it. So, yeah, we have kinder here that you can see coming at us. And then in the background, there's a pre-K class that's transitioning. It's like a, They're probably like coming train. from the bathroom. <laughs> it's like going a busy train <laughs> Yeah, it just, it's so smooth. And they know, look, they're not even talking to each other. They're what just else? walking. You can see, I see it looks like she has her hands behind yep, her back. hands behind her back. So what Usually would be the we... instructions before you walked out of the classroom for that? So for my class, what we do is we have the line leader come line up and they line all leader. line up okay. behind our line leader. Does everybody know who the line leader is? Yes. Yep. Okay. That's one of the first things we tell them in the morning okay. when we sit down to morning circle. Okay. So when we get up and we line up, we have the line leader come and they, everybody knows. And I remind them every time we go out of the classroom, okay, we put our, how do we walk in the hall? And they know, they tell me. We put our hands behind our back and we put a bubble in our mouth. A bubble. And once I see that from everybody, then I open the door and they walk out into the hallway. Look at this. It's just mm -hmm. amazing. I love the crossing trains, the Grand Central Station yes. effect that we have going yeah. on here. We could probably have another class in here and it still wouldn't be messed up. Probably not. No, no because, we could because do it. they know what they're supposed to yes, do. Yes, they do. Yeah, so that's called transitioning. Yes. That is a transition. That's a transition and, from and classroom you to bathroom. And the wiggles out too. Yep. I know some of the classes, they say rainbow and then the kids say Robin. Robins, yes. And also, aren't you, if they do start talking or it gets out of control, don't you have little buzzwords to get their attention to we're not? Yes. What do you guys do? If we're in the classroom and it's getting chatty and too loud and I need to speak, then I clap my hands, clap. Okay. And then they say, we are listening. Oh, so that's a, I haven't yeah. heard that one. I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. So that way I know that I have their attention. Also, at the end of our bathroom breaks for, I guess, kindergarten here, it looks like they're heading to the bathroom. We'll play the quiet game. Just because we have the twos class right there, they're still trying to learn and we don't want to be loud in the hallway. That's it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you, I had a couple of questions I want to ask you. When you're talking about routines, I, and I want you to tell me sure. what your ideas would be. So let me just pull this. So the routines that you should have in a school mm -hmm. would be entry and exit. Yes. I think we've demonstrated that. Yes, we've talked about that. Mm -hmm. Entry, we're teaching here independence. We're, we know they're going to big school someday. Yes. They're going to have to be responsible for their own backpacks. Talk about that whole what it because the stuff isn't just thrown in the classroom. No, it's absolutely not. So when we get them out of the car, even the twos, we put their backpacks on them and then we have them walk in the door and mm -hmm. they know where to go. You're there directing traffic. The kids go into the classroom. And then one of the first things that we teach them in the first few days of preschool is, OK, you come in. You find your cubby, you hang up your backpack, you take your folder out, you put it in your bucket and then you find your morning work. And what about their lunches and stuff? What are they lunches, doing with that? Yep, lunches come. Lunches usually stay in their backpack. We oh, ask, okay. we do ask them at, for at least for my classroom. Lunches stay in their backpacks. Okay. We take have them take out their snack and their water bottle also. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about if they have coats and stuff? Because that must upset the apple cart. There. Sometimes it can, especially when it's pretty cold. But they know to hang their coats up they next to their up. backpack on their hooks. Yes. The classroom is set up. It is set up so that you can do the routines that you're talking Correct. about. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. That, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. All right. Transition routines. Yeah. Tell me, is there anything else other than what we just saw with the kiddos with the lined up, being quiet, hands behind their back, a bubble? Is there any other transitions that you do to get them from one thing to another to uh, help them? Yeah. In my classroom, we have a timer. I'm really big oh, on timers okay. and them hearing the sounds versus me speaking to them. I want them to be able to clean up on their own. When they hear that timer and when they hear that timer, they so know. No words, a goal mm -mm. to get to. Yes. I know what I'm supposed to do. And yes. I do this every time yes. I have this activity. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to get up and go do what I'm, is expected of Correct. me. Uh -huh. I'm going to regulate myself. Yes, That's I'm so going to cool. regulate myself. I think yes. some and adults could benefit from that. And they that. know we've gotten to the point where they hear the timer, they clean up, and then they're just, they're, they're just waiting behind their chair to rotate to the next Here's another one that's on the list of what should be a routine. Mm -hmm. Teacher attention. Yes. Tell me about it. Teacher attention. Work? We already talked about that. 
so when I need to get my kids' attention, I do the clap, clap, oh, okay. clap, and then they say, we are listening. But if I teach it, how do I do that? I say, I'm a student. Please put your hand down and I will, I see you, I hear you, and I will get to you when we're ready okay. to talk. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there is a way, there is a way for them to communicate. Yes, back. absolutely. Oh, this is a good one. What do you do about a fast finisher? What's the oh, routine fast for finishers. that? Yes. <laughs> so in my classroom, we have tracers that we use. The papers get changed out um, about every couple of weeks, but they know, and we also model that. Um, so is after... it like a little setup somewhere? Yeah. They can so go it's to? yep. So oh, it's on okay. my bookcase, and they know that it's there. Um, it's the free, marker is free there for them to go. Free for them to go. So whenever they finish anything oh, super oh, fast, that's a great idea. They know that they put their paperwork or whatever that they're doing in their bucket to go home in their folder. They go get a tracer, a marker, and an eraser. And then they go back to their seat and work on that till all of our friends are finished working. Till the turtles come across the finish line. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> till then. Yes. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we showed all our, oh, I, another uh, videos. I don't want to miss out on these videos because they're so good. I think we have one where we're showing entering a classroom and sitting on an assigned spot. Yes. So tell me how this is a resource room, yep. correct? So this is resource room. This is my class. So before they went in, I prompted them to please walk in quietly and find a carpet square to sit on and... That's what they're doing. And they already know how to do that because Miss Crystal has already showed them and told them what they needed to do before they come in also. That's amazing. Then the, yeah. the next one, then talking about orientation and a routine. Now mm -hmm. watch this. So what's her routine here? Why is she doing this? So she's going over each and every station as a reminder. So we have this, the same stations in the unit. And then, but some kids do. Some kids do need a reminder and how to play with the station, how to clean it up. Can you give me an um, example of, of a station? Uh, so if it's, for example, there's a puzzle piece, you're teaching maybe the number 17, you've got the one and the seven. Mm -hmm. You Do you have it? Uh, does she have it there with her and she demonstrates it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So she'll actually pull it out. And so oh, I think here she, goes. she will go and she'll show you how to use the station, how to clean it up, and then how to get ready for the transition. One thing I think I'm seeing here is when you talk about scheduling and routines, mm -hmm. when we, remember we talked about that statistic that 80% of a school day is spent with instruction? Yes. I think we've just proven that by the videos and by these activities. There's a portion of what they're doing the activity and they're having the fun or whatever, but doesn't it eliminate or sh at least slow down the possibility of injuries? Kids Correct. aren't. I don't see your kids nope. running into each other and, and bumping heads together, which is nope. a very traumatic injury for yes. a child, by yeah. the way. Right. And uh, and then all children, the ones who really are eager to learn, it's not chaotic. Some kids don't do well in chaos. No. Anyway, just naturally, right. and so they don't have to. That doesn't happen. They're not getting thrown off Correct. by by chaotic right. frenetic activity. Right. You know, some kids are more active. Some kids are more passive. But this kind of satisfies the needs for both of those kids, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. The transitions are very helpful. Routines are very helpful. They know what to expect. They know what to, and they know what to do. That's awesome. Yeah. Miss Lene, you have been such an expert on schedule <laughs> and routines. And I don't know, we're big on writing our own stuff here. Yes. Could Maybe you could write a book on routines. I probably could. <laughs> Would that be fun? I the probably first could, book yes. by Miss Lene is... Routines in the classroom. Yes. Schedules Published and routines. Yes. 19, yeah, 20. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's been very nice having you do yeah. this segment. Thank I know you. I loved you in the classroom Thank showing you. us. I loved you in all these videos and then other teachers, other uh, of your staff, your colleagues here. This was really awesome. You gave us. So those of you at home, take this stuff that she's mm -hmm. showing you. You can do this. Yes, you, you can. You weren't born learned, were no, you? No, absolutely You've not. You've learned this. I have learned it, yes. But and sometimes it's trial and error. Not everything works with each classroom. You just got to figure yeah. out what works best for your students and what works best for you. And one thing that's huge, you guys, the reason we bring this to you, the reason we show you this, the reason we go into this level of detail is because we want to inspire you mm -hmm. to do this. We show you the stats behind it. Why is it important to have routines? And then we show you how to do it. You've gotten a lot of how-tos in these two episodes on yes. scheduling and routines. And I'm very thankful we have, I could bring 10 more teachers <laughs> in here and they would, you've seen other teachers in our videos, they would tell you the same thing. I'm a believer. I'm a believer in routines. Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you've you very much awesome. for having this me. This has been just great. Oh, this is exciting stuff. It is. So we've been talking about schedules and routines a lot. Kids need time each day to play, to read, to eat, 
to interact, to engage with the world around them. Designing your schedule and space to support effective routines helped promote children's development and learning. So we talked about what a good schedule is, and then we talked about how to have routines so that you can follow that schedule. So this is a great article on the elements of an effective schedule. It's called Pre Preschool Learning Environments. And you'll notice in our show notes, there'll be a link to this article. And I really suggest you read them. It helps, has a lot of points about how to design it. I think we've given you a lot of good points here, but yes. this, is going to, this is going to take you to some other articles and expanding on that. And again, we talk about the research and the research definitely supports children having, having a routine. It's definitely happier, more peaceful. And again, teach students who can learn. The next article I want to talk about is from Kids Creek Ministry. And they talk about why structure and consistency are important for kids. And it's not just for kids. It's for adults, too. I do better when I know, when I can predict what's going to happen next. I get more done. I don't stress out. I don't worry about it. And if that affects me as an adult, how much better and more does it affect little kids? I love this little happy couple here with this little baby. But kids get, when you have a good routine, good schedules, they get, they know how their day is going to unfold. Mm -hmm. They know what they're going to have to roll with that day. They know that they're keeping all things consistent. But they know that we're going to follow through with what we say. I'm not going to tell them one thing and do something else. And by the way, we're so structured and organized here. If we do, they'll remind us, you forgot to have us line up or you forgot to tell us to go get our lunchbox. Yes. It's pretty funny. They yes, know, they, they know if you mess up and they're, they don't mind telling you. It helps with boundaries. I know that I sit on this rug. I might be a little wiggly right now, but I know that I'm supposed to sit here and listen to my teacher so that I can take this fun activity and go do it. She's going to show me how to do it. So I have some boundaries and I don't, I, my impulses might be a little diminished and, and better controlled because I know what I'm supposed to do as a child. It gives you a sense of safety. We want safety with our children. We don't want children getting hurt. And children also need that. I can know if I'm following the certain instructions and following this routine, something bad's not going to happen to me because we're too close together or I'm standing on the table when I shouldn't, I should be sitting on a leaf on the floor. So it helps them. Also, we talked about self-regulation, letting children learn how to control their own behavior. And if you think about that, we've been doing the fruits of the spirit in chapel. And one of the important ones, of course, it's one as teachers, we're going to, we're going to be sure we talk about is self-control. And God tells us that doesn't come naturally. We have to pray and ask mm -hmm. him, but he can help us to have self-control. So we're giving those little mini steps to being self-regulated and having self-control. And we're telling children that this is important. We have any, everything we do here at the Nest, we start off the day saying that we show the love of Jesus in everything we do and say, and we obey the first time every time. And we have a scripture verse for that. So when we say, we, I will obey the first time er, every time, and it's in Exodus where it says, listen and obey. So we're, we know and we're, we understand that rules, that, that having, having standards really comes from God. God's giving us the book, the Bible, on how to behave and what, what his standards are. So it's teaching them to joyfully follow routines and joyfully learn how to listen and obey so that they can someday listen and obey God. And uh, so it's really powerful. I think this has just been a powerful lesson. I'm really excited. Thank you for joining us. Miss Lene, thank you for being thank here. Thank you for having me today. You, I, I think we're going to have to ask her back. I oh, think, I'd love to come no, back. This yes. isn't a one-off, Miss Lene. You're, <laughs> yeah, you're, we, you're on deck. All right, I'm here. So we'll I'm here this, for it. Lots of wisdom here. She's taught two-year-olds and pre-K. That's a different, two different types of kiddos. Two different types of kiddos. But yep. this has and been it amazing. Be I love it that you out there, our audience, are getting to hear from real educators real administrators from a preschool. You're getting to hear real stories. You're getting to see actual live classroom experiences. We're going to get to see you in the classroom, mm -hmm. just demonstrating for all the educators out there. So she's going to show you actually inside the classroom. She's going to stand in front of the board. It's going to be really fun. You yeah. guys are going to really like it. All right. Welcome to my classroom. This is our Blue Jays classroom. This is our pre-K four, but welcome in. So how I set up my day, I have my schedules here, a Tuesday schedule, Thursday schedule. So I will look here and I will pick out our soft start work. And usually it's our alphabet book 
from the letter that we did the previous week. So we've done Q and U already, and I can show you what it looks like. So they know what letter they're supposed to do when they come in. Like I said, they will come in, they'll put their backpacks in their cubby, pull out their folders, um, their snacks and their waters, and they will put those all away. Then they will come over here and um, they will get their driver's license. We talked about that here. It's got um, some information on here. This is our my sweet friend Grayson. It's got his birthday, his phone number, and his address. And they will spell, they'll come in and they'll spell their first and last name and go over all their information. And then once they finish that, they come over here, they put it there, and then they go find their seat and um, get started on their morning work. So while they're doing that, I finish my prep, thankfully. We have these fantastic binders here that give me everything that I need to know for the day. I will set out my routine here, morning circles. I know my morning circle will be our calendar time, our Bible story, but we'll go over our phonics and our letter, and we'll do our morning prayer. And then we will go into our morning station. So that's when I get everybody out on the rug, and we'll talk about um, our station. We have our center boxes on the floor. That's usually a self-directed station. We'll have our handwriting. We'll have our journal. And then we'll have our another self-directed station that they will do. Usually we'll have our papers. All, I have them usually all ready to go. And then we'll go over all of our paperwork that we need to do on the carpet. They know, okay, what do we do first? We put our name we, we write our name first, and then we'll go over all of our, everything that's on here, and then how they need to go about doing it when they get to the table. And then we have usually a snack break. At that point in time, they'll transition to snack. They know that they need to go get their snack and their water, come to their table, and then they wait, and we pray, and then they can eat their snack. When we finish, we have our chew and swallow time, that's when we put on a video, usually of our letter of the day, syllables, numbers, anything that's educational. They will take that video time and they will finish their snack. Then they clean up and we come back to the carpet for, you, for let's see, we finish. Oh, that's when we do our stations. That's when we go over all of our stations and then we break up into our station groups and then they will work on those. And for transitioning out of our stations, we talked about I in my classroom, I use a timer. Um, so they know when they hear that timer, that's when they start cleaning up. Anybody who is working on paperwork will go put all of their paperwork in their bucket, come back, clean up their area, crayon cups go back in the caddies, pencils, scissors, tops on their glue if they're cutting and gluing, push in their chair, and then they stand and wait. When we finish our stations, we have our lunch and our bathroom break. So we will have our line leader line up and then everybody gets behind them. I do remind them, okay, how do we walk in the hallway? And they show me, they bubble in their mouth, hands behind their back. And then that's when I know that they're ready to walk to the bathroom. We take our break, we come back. We, they get their lunches and their waters, same as we saw in the video. They will come to their spot at their table and they will wait for me to get ready to pray. We pray and then they eat lunch. We clean up when they're finished and we do another silly video. Usually it's a silly video afterward, a brain break, we get the wiggles out. Then we go into our afternoon math stations. Usually it's let number shapes. We'll go over our colors and, and then we have our paperwork that we our station paperwork that we do, usually it's a number sheet, and then we'll have math manipulatives in our other stations that we do. And same thing, timer goes off, they know to clean up, get ready to rotate. Usually we stop in the middle of our um, station rotations to get ready for recess, and they know they they know about the time at the, when we get ready for math that it's almost recess time. And they will not forget to tell me that it's almost recess time. So we line them up, we, I, Remind them, how do we walk in the hallway? Bubble, hands behind our back. And then we go outside for our recess time. And then we come back in, we finish our station rotations, and then we clean up and get ready for our end of the day. And 
how I do that transition. We finish cleaning up all of our stations. I have everybody come back to the carpet and I pick the quietest student, whoever's sitting nicely, crisscross applesauce, to go get their backpack first. And that's usually a prompt for everybody else to go, okay, it's time to start being quiet. It's time to get ready to go. And then I can call everybody to get their backpacks and wait for our dismissal. And in that time also, I will read to them or we will pick a video on something that we have learned for that day, usually a letter sound, syllables, numbers. Okay, so over here we have our reading nook. The kids know that they can go there whenever they get finished with a station or a paper. Like I said, I always have early finishers so they can do tracer or they can come to the reading corner and get a book and sit and look at pictures on the books or read if they are already reading. Over here, we have a lot of little fun things we can do. I have my Play-Doh and my Play-Doh tools. We do these for early finishers also. I've got magnetic letters that they can play with. I have math manipulatives down here that they can get out and use. Lots of counting shapes that they can sort here. These are all of our center boxes here. So when we do our morning centers, we will usually put these down on the floor and this will be a station for them. And these are all self-directed. We've gone over each and every one of them so they know to go to one of these, pick their favorite one, and they can work on it. But a lot of them, they're super fun. They're, it's almost like play, but they really are learning. So this one here is a um, apple tree. So they will go and they'll pick a number out of the bag and put it on here. So number two, so then they know, oh, I got to put two apples on the tree. They're still playing and learning, and they do these during our morning stations here. Thanks for visiting my classroom. Hope y'all enjoyed it. So what a blessing. So yes. thank you for watching. It's really nice to have you. We hope that you'll catch other episodes. If you'll click below, you'll see lots of resources and references to our material. And there's a lot of really fun, exciting, informative episodes that we've already done. And we look forward to doing more. Who knows what's next? You come back. Mm -hmm.